Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first ever tutorial on the Panoptis Soundworks channel. My name is Julian Shushchik, and today I will be demonstrating how to sample and resample with the Electron Octatrack. Now, I've had this beast of a little box for about one year now, and I'm still learning new things about it to this day, so the, uh, the depth to this machine really can't be overstated. Let's get right to it. The Octatrack is a dynamic performance sampler which allows you to sequence samples and MIDI control data. On track one, I have a through machine selected which is allowing me to pass signal from inputs A and B straight to the main output. This is how you are hearing my voice right now. I have my handy dandy Zoom H6 with a mid-side capsule attached. Running into inputs A and B, you have nice little LEDs in LED indicators which uh, shine accordingly with the loudness of my voice. And they turn red if you're clipping. So this is a nice little metering tool they give you. So in order to sample with the Octatrack from an external source, you need to uh, turn your track over to a flex machine. Now, let's do that by double tapping the track button and hitting left. Now we have the select machine type page. From here, we could select flex and now hit back over to the right. And you'll notice that our menu is populated with recorders R1 through R8 corresponding with our eight tracks. Let's make sure R2 is selected for track two. Yes, and now let's go back. Excellent. The next step is crucial. We want to set up our uh, recording buffer to uh, look for signal from the right place, essentially. So you do this by hitting function and holding it down and pressing the left rec record button. This brings up recording setup page one. And from here, you could set where your recorder is listening to. So we want A and B, because uh, that's where our microphone is going. We don't want C and D, and we want our record length to be set to 32. So it corresponds with our two pages of 16. Great. It is currently in trigger mode one. Uh, SRC3 allows you to sample from internal tracks or the main or Q output. And we have loop, mo loop mode, on or off, great. So that seems about right. So this next portion is very important to uh, understand because it's sort of confusing. We want to go into sequence mode by hitting the red button. Now, when the recording setup page is active, you are not sequencing normal triggers. It is very important to keep this in mind. You are sequencing record triggers. A normal trigger uh, you know, tells the machine to start playing this recording at this point. However, on the other hand, record triggers tell the machine to start recording at a given point. So we want to go ahead and place one record trigger. I'm going to show you a neat little trick that will save you some heartache. Hold function and press the trig and it will make and click it one more time. Make sure you get a there it is nice and yellow record trig. Now a yellow record trig is a one shot record trig and this is great for uh, for this instance because we want to record into the buffer once and we don't want it to keep triggering. Uh, I used to use red record trigs for this and sometimes I would forget to take them off and I'd record something awesome and when I'd go to, to play and hear what I had, I would end up losing everything because the record trig would start recording over the buffer once again. So let's not do that and let's stick to yellow record tricks. Now that looks all fine and dandy. Let's go back and hit play. Let's actually uh, see what we could do here. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Panoptis Soundworks channel. Thank you. Great. Let's take a look at our waveform by pressing the track button and hitting bank. 
There we are. Look at this. You could see our recording. If you'd like to hear the active recording on your track, hit the track button and hit play. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Panoptis Soundworks channel. Thank you. Hello, Great. hello. Great. Excellent. So what I want to do now is sample myself manipulating track two onto track three. So to do this, I'm gonna slice up our track here by hitting track and bank, going to slice, create slice grid. I'm gonna create eight slices, yes. Let's go back, function playback to access the playback setup menu and make sure slice mode is on. Notice the LEDs become active when uh, slice mode is on. Uh, you also need to make sure you're not in sequence mode, which is what happens when this uh, when you press the red button and the red LED is active. So make sure you're out of sequence mode and make sure you're in the right key mode. So there are different modes you could assign to these bottom 16 triggers here. Um, here's chromatic. Hello, 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 hello. But what we want for now is slices. Come to you, not not slow, and all come to you. Great. So let's set up track three so its recorder is listening to track two. Double tap on track three, left. Let's select uh, flex, right. Make sure R3 is selected. Let's go back. Now hold function and hit the left record button to bring up the recording setup page. Now we do not want A, B, we don't want C, D. Record length 32 sounds about right. But this time we want to set uh, SRC3 to track 2. So now this recording buffer is going to be listening to whatever happens on track 2. We have the record setup page active. Let's place a yellow record trig for that so we do it doesn't keep re-recording over itself and great now we can go back go here and i'm going to hit play and tap in a little rhythm with this okay great let's take a look at it track three and bank there it is look at that okay let's trim it a little bit Let's hear it. Great. So why would anybody ever bother to resample within the machine, you might ask? So there are two main reasons I could think of at this moment. One is to combine multiple tracks onto one track. If you want to sum uh, some of your work and you're done with it and you need more real estate, you need more tracks to build more sounds and have more layers, you could sum multiple channels onto one. Now, another reason one would want to resample is to create a syncopated, uh, well, let's put it like this. Sequencers ultimately are somewhat robotic. You have a sequence, you have a grid, and it's very, you know, clean cut. Now, if you want something that's a little bit more rhythmic and syncopated, you could tap it in with your fingers and have another track listening to that. That way you will have the perfect groove to whatever you're trying to do. So great. Now, there's one last step that is crucial, and you, you will uh, have a bad time if you forget to do this. Uh, let's access our track by hitting track and bank and go to file and hit save and assign sample. Here you could name it and assign it to self. Now, this is gonna save you a lot of heartache. Let's say you've done a bunch of recordings, uh, you have your buffers populated, you love what's going on and with your machine and you get tired and it's time to uh, you know get some rest and continue your work tomorrow, the, the following day, right? Uh, you turn off your machine and you come back the following morning, you turn on your Octatrack and you have silence. Now, this has happened to me once before and I'll tell you right away, it's a very unpleasant experience. Basically, when you record into the buffers of the Octatrack, 
these files are not being saved on your compact flash drive. And you need to do that in order for the OctaTrack to be able to recall these sounds after it is turned off. So this is definitely a very crucial step that I urge you not to forget. Okay, don't forget to save what you have recorded into your buffers. That's it for now, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for listening. I hope you find this tutorial helpful. Uh, I plan to make more tutorials and re do reviews and demonstrations of various gear I have here. So please feel free to subscribe and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Take care.